Hello the internet and welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to show you my current limiter and isolation transformer unit which I made some time ago, which I called the Bang Preventer and hopefully it will do what it says. It is a very simple unit. This has two functions in one. The first one, it contains an isolation transformer. The second one, it contains some light bulbs, which you can see down there which act as a current limiter when you're testing something which you don't know whether it's gonna short out or not. And that will basically save the device on the test and maybe will present your main breaker to, to trip and potentially disconnect the electricity from the, the whole of your house. This is the input of the transformer, which is a Schneider ABL6TS25U. At the output of the transformer, basically this output is going to this uh, UK socket on the right hand side, but in parallel in between the transformer and the sockets, I have these six light bulbs, which can be independently engaged from the switches I have on the front panel. Now these are different light bulbs in terms of power. These are 15 watts light bulb, this is a 42, then we have a 360 watts and 100 watts. So I can basically change the current protection of my device between 15 watts and around 350 watts if I connect them all together. Now let's make a, let's, let's take a step backwards and you know, what is this thing? You know, how does that work? What you see here is basically version one of my current limiter and you've, you'll find this on many repair videos and it's recommended by many people online. But how does this work? Now, here through these main slits, you've got mains going uh, into the socket, but it's going through the light bulb. So light bulb is connected in series with the two sockets here. So what happens is uh, this is a 42 watt light bulb. As long as your device under test is drawing much lower than the rated wattage of your light bulb, your light bulb more or less acts like a short. Okay, so it conducts 100%, more or less, it's not exactly 100%, but more or less 100% of the current and you get full voltage and whatever wattage you require at the sockets. Now, the moment you have a short, or in this case, the moment you draw more than 42 watts, what happens is the filament inside the light bulb will warm up and eventually will produce light. But the thing is, this light bulb is designed to draw maximum 42 watts. So what happens is now that the light bulb acts as a current limiter, which means that even if you short these two conductors here, you won't have any more than 42 watts flowing into the whole circuit, which means your device on the test won't get any more than 42 watts, even if it shorts out. Now, the disadvantage of this, besides that the lamp is a bit in an inconvenient position because it's very easy to break it, the downside of this is that now I have a 42 watts lamp, I might want to power up something which might require a bit more. So what I need to do, I need to remove my light bulb, store it somewhere, get another one, put it back in, let's say 100 watts and see you know, how it works with 100 watts. And I decided I wanna make something where I can have a number of, of uh, light bulbs which can be engaged or disengaged independently. And what happens is you can basically raise or lower the current limiter by just flipping a few switches at the front of the unit. Now, let me do a little demonstration of this thing and let, let me see what happens. Let me plug this into mains and I'll show you I'll show you how it works. Here in one of the sockets, I have a heat gun. This is um, 1,800 watts of heat gun. As a current limiter but light bulb, I have a only 100 watts light bulb. This thing has three speeds, okay? The first speed is only the fan, second speed is low temperature, and third speed is a very high temperature. So if I try and just uh, spin the fan, So you see the heat gun is, is working and the light bulb is barely lit. Uh, that means that basically I'm probably drawing something close to 100 watts. Now the disadvantage of this is that when this happens, obviously you have a voltage drop at your device under, te under test. So this is not a perfect uh, current limiter, obviously, but again, it's, it's cheaper than anything else. Now let's see what happens if I try and turn on the heating element inside this thing. So, there you go. Basically what happens is, this is kind of a short. So right now you have more or less 100 watts maximum going into the going into the heat gun, which is probably barely enough to keep the motor spinning. 
It's a very, very easy and very convenient, I'd like to say, current limiter, which I would say if you are into boards repair or something, you should have at least this one. Now I'm gonna do another test. Please don't do this at home, but again, hopefully it's kind of safe. As you can see here, I've created a short. So I have here a Wago connector and I've got neutral and live connected together. Now, the moment I'm giving power to the saying, I'm just closing the circuit so the lamp just powers on and there will be 100 watts flow into the whole circuit. So if this is your device on the test, it would only receive 100 watts because the lamp is acting as a current limiter. Check this out. Again, this is a dead short. Again, I'm on mains voltage. Now, the way this works is exactly the same. Let's ignore the isolation transformer for a moment. It's just that instead of one light bulb in series, I have six light bulbs in series and all paralleled together. By selecting those switches here at the bottom, I can basically select whether to have none of the light bulbs or maybe only one or two or three or four or all six light bulbs for around 350 watts of maximum current limiting. Now, let me give you a, a test drive example. Uh, on the right hand side, I have connected to this thing, which is live at the moment, a switching mode power supply for a small laptop. So nothing serious. It's probably drawing, you know, a few, I don't know, 50 watts or something like that, probably even less than that. I really didn't label this one, but the, the first switch here is the small 15 watts lamp on the left hand side. So if I turn this on and I give power to the unit, what you can see, you have the light bulb, it's like halfway through lit. That means that probably my device is drawing something very close to 15 watts. The light bulb is lighting up and it's probably causing a voltage drop, which that Lenovo power supply might or might not like. To be honest, being a switching mode power supply would probably like it. So what I can do, I can add 42 watts for a total of 57 watts altogether. And basically the light bulbs, you can see they're barely glowing because obviously now it's uh, the my power supply is drawing much, much less current than the light bulbs are rated for. If I really want to be on the safe side, I can switch a third lamp on and that's it. I don't have any glowing whatsoever on my light bulbs anymore. Now, what is the advantage of using these light bulbs? It's obviously when the light bulb is lit, it's actually causing a voltage drop. In this case, I've fitted this little uh, voltage reader, which is pretty handy. And you can see that with only the 15 watts lamp engaged, which is now currently lit inside the box, I have a voltage output of 169 volts. Now, this is a small power supply and it's this one, it's multi-voltage, it's designed to work 120 volts, so that's probably totally happy. But if I were using something else, it wouldn't really be happy at 169 watts. Let's see what happens if I engage the next light bulb, which is 42 watts, for a total of, I think it's 57 watts. The voltage has gone back to 260 volts, which apparently is the today's voltage. But the thing is, with two light bulbs, I'm back to two, a much more reasonable voltage. And if I engage a third one, I'm actually going up for a couple of more volts. But obviously, if I only have my 15 watts lamp, the lamp itself is causing a voltage drop. And in this situation, if I didn't have the ability of selecting more light bulbs, I would need to replace the light bulb with something more powerful. This little switch here is basically a bypass. So if I wanted to temporarily bypass all the light bulbs and just feed the output of my isolation transformer straight to my output, I can just flip this one and that's it. You can see this is going back to 260 volts. I also wanted an isolation transformer for when, I was, when I'm working on live equipment, mainly power supplies. Now, there's a very nice video from Mr. Carlson Lab, which I'm gonna link down below on why you want to use an isolation transformer. But basically the point of the isolation transformer is to isolate you from the mains. And the, the main advantage is that after an isolation transformer, you can actually unintentionally, obviously, touch the live conductor of a circuit and you don't get shocked. So that's pretty important when you're working on live equipment, like power supplies or TVs or something. You will not save your life all the time. Just bear that in mind. It's only reducing the risk. And I really wanted one. And I thought, you know what? I'll just create a box, put everything together. So this, in this one, you have the isolation transformer that, that then goes 
into the light bulbs and but the light bulbs can be bypassed this can pretty much be used as an isolation transformer by itself this is the input of the box. It's an IC unit. It does have a fuse drawer here. If I end up with a massive short or if I ended up drawing more than the 200 watts the power supply can cope with, the fuse will blow. And here on the right hand side, I have a standard UK socket. You might have seen me giving power to something. I'm usually using this main switch here, which is large and always handy if something happens, even though again, this is a current limiter, so nothing too horrible should really happen when this is engaged. If you are into any type of repairs that requires mains power, uh, even though through power supplies, I would recommend you build or source one of these. It's very easy to make, it's very um, cheap, it's only a couple of components and it will potentially save your device on the test and probably quite a lot of headache. But if you are a bit more adventurous as sometimes I am, you might want to come up with something a bit more complex like this, which not only features the light bulbs, for current limiting, but also an um, isolation transformer, which hopefully will save your life, finger crossed, hopefully you never need that. Now, especially today with 3D printing, I guess that this boss could be actually printed. Anyways, I'm sure that some of you will be more skilled than I am in terms of woodworking or building boxes like this. Obviously, it's plenty of prototyping boxes that you can buy ready-made. It's just they tend to be a bit expensive and I decided to save a little bit of money and just make my own with wood. It doesn't look great, or it does look great, depending on what you're looking for. But obviously there are a, different, a million different options to build something like this. That's it, I just wanted to show you this thing. I know that some of my viewers actually asked for this on a few videos. I hope you liked this box and I hope you liked this video. If you did, I would be very happy if you could um, hit the like button down below and also maybe su considering subscribing to this channel if you like what I'm doing. For now, thank you for watching. I wish you a great day and I hope to see you again soon here on my channel for my next video. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye-bye.